Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today is taking a look at an Amps Uncolored Enchantment Self Mill deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and the build around card in our deck is Spirit Sisters Call, the 5 mana Mythic Rare Enchantment from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, says at the beginning of your end step, choose target permanent card in your graveyard, then you may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with the chosen card, and if you do, return the chosen card from your graveyard to the battlefield, except if that permanent would leave the battlefield, and sell it instead of putting it anywhere else. So Spirit Sister Skull is this powerful recursion engine, and in this deck we're focusing mainly on enchantments and creatures as the card types that we're gonna try and get back from our graveyard, and that's also helped by the fact that we have some creatures that are also enchantments, like Spirited Companion, a 2 mana 1 1 that when it enters the battlefield it draws a card, so perfect sacrifice fodder for Spirit Sister Skull, as it will both get back a creature or an enchantment if we decide to sacrifice it. Then another key creature in the deck is Dreadhound, a 6 mana 6 6 demon dog that when it enters mills 3 cards, and then whenever a creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from a library, each opponent loses 1 life. So this gives us a nice 6-6 six, six creature that will passively drain the opponent, as we have plenty of self-mill effects besides the Dreadhound itself. And with the self-mill, we of course also fuel our Spirit Sister's Call, so we can get additional stuff back from our graveyard. And another one of those is Teachings of the Kirin, a 2-mana enchantment saga that on the first chapter mills 3 cards and creates a 1-1 one, one spirit token. On chapter 2 can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on a creature we control, and then eventually transforms into an enchantment creature that when it attacks can either exile a card and make a 1-1 one, one spirit token, or add a plus 1 counter to one of our creatures. And then the Transformed Saga also counts as an enchantment creature, so it gives us that same flexibility as Spirited Companion to both get back an enchantment or a creature from our graveyard. Then we also have Shigeki, the 2 mana 1 3 legendary enchantment creature that can ramp by using the activated ability. We get to mill the top 4 cards of our library, putting a land card from among them onto the battlefield and the rest into our graveyard. So this helps us ramp into our 5 and 6 mana cards. At the same time, it also fuels our Spirit Sister's Call and potentially enables Dreadhound. And there's more. We can also use the channel ability for double X and double green, discard it from our hand to return X, target to non legendary cards from our graveyard to our hand so it can potentially get back a Spirit Sister's Call that got milled in case we don't have one in play already. Then another new addition is a Greater Tanuki, a card we can channel for 3 mana by discarding it from our hand and search our library for a basic land card to put on the battlefield tapped. And then it's going to be a nice 6-5 enchantment creature with Trample that we can get back either by sacrificing a creature or an enchantment. So the ideal curve in this deck looks something like turn 2 Companion, turn 3 maybe Channel Tanuki, and then turn 4 we could already play Spirit Sister's Call, sacrifice our Companion end of turn, and put a Tanuki into play on turn 4 while having our engine ready to go to put more stuff into play. And then we also have Alt Rudstein, which can do a similar job to the Tanuki in helping us ramp towards our 5 mana cards as a 1 4 creature that when it enters a battlefield or at the beginning of our upkeep, we get to mill a card. If a land is milled, we get to make a treasure token. If a creature is milled, we get to make a 1 1 insect token. And if a non creature non land card is milled, we get to make a blood token, which can also help us discard cards from our hand to potentially end up in our graveyard. So Old Rustine does a lot of useful things, it helps us fuel our various uh, graveyard engines like the Spirit Sister's Call, can help us ramp by making that treasure token to still cast it on turn 4, and of course also enables our Dreadhound to potentially drain the opponent. Then another very important card is Binding the Old Gods. This is the main removal spell in the deck, as it will destroy target and non-land permanent and opponent controls on Chapter 1. Then on Chapter 2 we get to search our library for a forest card to put on the battlefield tapped. That's also the reason why we're including the Woodland Chasm and Tree Line as potential dual lands we get to search up with Binding to fix for white and black mana. So we're ramping at the same time. And then Binding we can easily sacrifice to a Spirit Sister's Call to get back a different enchantment from our graveyard. And then later we can still get back that original binding a second time to destroy another problematic permanent. So just a very powerful removal spell in a Spirit Sister's Call deck. 
And then finally we've got three copies of Burning Rune Demon as another nice curve topper that we can reanimate, a 6-6 flyer that when it enters a battlefield we may search our library for exactly two cards not named Burning Rune Demon with different names, then our opponent gets to choose one to put into our graveyard and the other one we get to put into our hand. So we'll usually look for a Spirit Sister's Call and a Dreadhound, maybe a Binding the Old Gods mixed in as well, so we can get back some removal with our Spirit Sister's Call or just play more Dreadhounds that will eventually kill the opponent. So our game plan is pretty simple, just play a bunch of creatures and enchantments, get value from our graveyard and then eventually kill the opponent with Dreadhound triggers or just by attacking with our large six powered creatures. Then the mana base needs a couple basic lands to go with the Tanuki, so we've got two forests which we can also find with binding, two swamps and a plains, and then plenty of mana fixing as well as those dual lands I mentioned earlier. No real room for creature lands, although you could maybe try and sneak in one or two. Another card that's close to making it into the deck is Meat Hook Massacre, as of course a very powerful sweeper effect, so if you're facing a lot of mono white aggro decks for example, you could certainly add a few copies of Meat Hook Massacre, although it's not the most synergistic with the Spirit Sisters Call, as it's not something you want to get back from the graveyard, although you could of course sacrifice it as an enchantment to get back a different enchantment. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with uh, what looks like a keepable hand. Probably gonna kick things off with the Visionary to help us ramp. Make sure we can play a Binding in time. And then Binding will help us ramp towards Demon and Redhound. Demon finding Spirit Sister's Call plus could always go for another Visionary to maybe channel back Spirit Sister's Call, although we just drew one. And uh, yeah, just gonna pass for now. Can Shumblock pick up Visionary. And next turn Binding could come down or we could wait to maybe destroy Nasika's Chariot, which might be more problematic and just leveling up ranger class so that's also a uh, tempting target now found our land and there's already a spirit sister skull in the graveyard to potentially channel back so with this turn yeah we could binding the ranger class although it's not bothering me too much i'm also down to just replay visionary once again and just keep jumping the wolf. And uh, maybe play a companion as well. It's gonna be a primal adversary. 4-3 trample. That's okay. We'll take 4. And another binding. So now what could go for Rutstein, pick up Visionary after jumping the wolf. Kinda like that. Treasure's useful. And once we generate enough mana we can channel back something, although Liberator is something I probably want to destroy as it could otherwise take care of our enchantment. That opponent's got a massive might to give a trample, so now picking up Visionary is not quite gonna have the desired results, as we still take 11, but... Next turn we get to untap with hopefully quite a bit of mana. Alright, so I can double binding, and then probably take care of Adversary and Liberator. That seems reasonable, or we can just go big with uh, Demon or Dreadhound, which is also totally fine. The upside of double binding is that we get to then pick up a couple lands, and it becomes easier to channel stuff back from the graveyard to completely take over. And also becomes easier to just double spell my six drops with something else. So Liberator can go. 
and then probably get rid of the trampler. Although, if they have another massive might, I guess we could be in trouble. Just gonna hang back. Karyatids can make two mana. So if they have another pump spell here, I would take seven trample. But jumping with Rudstein seems bad, so I don't think we play around it. Alrighty. Two more lands on the way. And then now... Could go for Demon over Dreadhound, plus play a Visionary, keep the other one to channel. And this can find Spirit Sister's Call, plus probably another Binding. And I imagine we'll get the Binding. Alright, we got to Call instead. That's nice. So just need to survive here, and then Spirit Sister's Call will do the rest. I might Spirit Sister's Call get back one from the graveyard, so we have two in play. Invoke the Ancients is pretty good here. Opponent making two, four, five tramplers. Could be scary. And a wolf attacks. Alright, so... I think we're still in favor of just chumping the wolf as opposed to trying to trade for it. Creatures gain death touch. And then do I have the mana to Dreadhound and Spirit Sister's Call? I do. So that's probably the play then. And then we'll just hang back for now. And then I could call for call. Although with a visionary to channel it back. I'm not too concerned about establishing double splitted sister's call. And I would rather get on the board now. Which probably means either dreadhound or demon. And I guess demon's probably better for now. Sacrifice a companion. And find Dreadhound and probably another call. Ooh, a natural growth. Yeah, that could be problematic. Two eight power tramplers. So, can double block one, and then chump the author, and then chump the wolf as well. And then next turn, what's the plan? Can get back a couple bindings to try and deal with a natural growth. Um, that seems reasonable. Is there a better block available here? This seems okay, and then they can decide between killing Dreadhound or Rutstein. But we won't quite kill the 8-10. Okay, so... Let's see, I can channel... If I channel for two, that's going to cost me six mana. And then I would still have the mana to cast both bindings. So I think that's the play here. Make sure we leave enough green mana available, but I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. So X equals one, X equals two. Get back. Double binding, I think. 
Could also go for Spirit Sister's Call. Yeah, double binding seems fine. And then play a binding. Killing a natural growth. And play a binding. Killing the 4 5. And then we can sacrifice a binding to get back another binding. Just to play it safe. Kill the wolf. Probably meant I could have tried to attack with a demon here to try and close out the game. But, uh. Yeah, we should be able to get there. Now they had an answer for Spirit Sister's Call. I kind of lost my recursion engine by channeling the Visionary. So, gotta try and get that second Spirit Sister's Call in play as soon as possible. Another Visionary's excellence. Get our last forests. Play Dreadhound. And does a demon finally attack? I think we still leave it back for a turn. There's no rush. And then get back call. Sacking. Binding. And Renan 7 can make a large reach creature. We prefer not to fight, but we also will not hold back. Although it wouldn't be large enough to necessarily block my demon right now. They could copy it with a chariot, lose a chariot. Opponent's down to two cards in hand. So I think we successfully managed to outgrind them. But yeah, that unnatural growth was a scary one. Almost got us. Opponent is going to copy the tree folk. And then I guess we'll double block with Dreadhound and a 1 1 just in case they have another plus 2 plus 2. Although then I would be throwing away the 1 1 for free. Maybe I'll just double block Dreadhound and Demon. Seems better. That opponent did have a safekeeping, make it indestructible to keep their chariot alive. Although that safekeeping still would have been useful for them either way, so... We're down to 16 cards in library, so have to be a little careful that we don't deck ourselves, but... Uh, I think it's time to put the pedal to the metal. So I can activate the Visionary to also channel it back. I have double Spirit Sister's Call end of turn, which can go for Dreadhound times two. And then if I were to pick this up, channel, I can channel for maybe two and get some other stuff back. Yeah, I guess that's okay. And then do I want to attack or do we just try and kill them with Dreadhound triggers? Dreadhound triggers sound fine. I guess we could send Rutstein and a 1 1 perhaps. And I'm fine if those trade. Alright, run and 7 down. Pick up Visionary. Did not find a land. Dreadhound triggers a bunch. 
I guess I could channel for one to just get back a Dreadhound. And then triple Dreadhounds is pretty likely to get there. So yeah, we can get back two Dreadhounds from the graveyard and a third one we can play right now. And then we'll be down to one card in library, but uh, pretty sure we'll get enough triggers to kill the opponent on the following turn at the very least. Double Spirit Sisters Call, get back Dreadhounds, get back another Dreadhounds, sack my two 1-1s, one which also triggers Dreadhounds, and yeah, they're just dead here. Alright, we got all four dogs in play, mission accomplished. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little bit clunky with uh, Rudstein and Double Dreadhound. On the play I could maybe try and keep this as a way to potentially play Rudstein, hope to get lucky, make a few treasures to ramp into Dreadhound. On the draw this feels a little too slow. Alright, this is better. So definitely keeping Companion to try and hit my land drops. And then probably just get rid of the Demon as the most expensive card. Turn to Companion. And then turn 3 Rutstein. Hopefully making treasure or we can draw a land here. Alright, Spikefield Hazard exiles my companion, so don't get to have any fun recurring it with my Spirit Sister's Call, but we found another one. Could try and play around a Jory Disruption and play another companion here. It's gonna be a Sod coming instead, that's fine. So we wouldn't mind them presenting a target for binding. Smoldering Egg will do. Or we can double Companion, make it more likely that I hit my land drop for Spirit Sister's Call, which I also kind of like. So let's try that instead. Bodon passes. Goldspan Dragon, another great target for binding if they play it here. Opponent foretells what could be another sword coming. So not sure how I feel about playing a Spirit Sister's Call into that, potentially. I guess we'll just destroy the egg. If they had a goal span, they probably would have played it last turn. Opponent does pull the trigger on the counterspell. Get to hit for one. And yeah, hopefully next turn resolve either Spirit Sister's Call or Burning Rune Demon. And then Blue Red's gonna struggle to get rid of an enchantment once it's in play. So, step one, probably attack. And I guess I could go for Demon. If that gets countered, I still have my call. If it resolves, then great, we have a Demon. Jory Disruption, so there was a reason to go for Call, but they didn't disrupt my old Rudstein on 3, so they must have drawn that recently. Alright, hopefully they're out of counter spells now, and we get to resolve our Mythic Enchantments. Alright, that resolved. Sacrifice Companion, bring back Demon, or we can go for Binding first. Uh, close call. I guess we'll go for Demon.
And then Demon can find a second Spirit Sister's Call. And a Dreadhound. Another Binding, also reasonable. And then we have plenty of Sacrifice Fodder in hand to feed to our Spirit Sister's Call. Ways to block the Hall of the Storm Giants if that turns into a creature here. And then we can get back our enchantment to kill the Transformed Egg potentially. Opponent passes. So Demon gets to attack. And then I guess we could double spell here instead of playing Dreadhound to make sure we have something cheap to sacrifice. Opponent takes it. So how about Rutstein? Resolves. And a Teachings. Alright, and then end of turn. Probably go for Binding. Although getting another Spirit Sister's Call is tempting. And then we'll wait a turn. Yeah, that's probably fine too. Sacrifice my Teachings. Now we have double Spirit Sisters Call in play. And we're not going to lose a grindy late game situation. Alright, Alchemist Gambits. To try and take an extra turn, although we're still at 20. So they've got a long way to go. We can shun block the hall on the ground. And our opponent's going to lose the game if they don't uh, kill us here. So, we'll see what happens. Dragon hits us for four. And looks like our opponent dies to the Alchemist Gambit. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Assuming we can find another land at some point. And then turn to Companion. Early Sacrifice Fodder for Spirit Sister's Call. Up against Red-Green of some variety. Find Teachings. And a Bard class, alright. Well, we're familiar with that deck. And Tanuki shows up, so we get to ramp into our Binding to destroy Bard class. And then we can sack Companion to get back Tanuki at some point as well. Alright, let's see what they can play next here. Could see a Targnar for free, Magda for one mana. It's gonna be Targnar for free. And that's it. And then probably get the double black sorted. Keep the force in the deck for binding as well. Could spare Sister's Call right now, but I think Bard class is too much of a problem here that we should take it out. And yeah, then Dreadhound can start milling alongside Teachings to find more goodies, so don't hate the start. Take three. And Burgi shows up. Another binding. That's nice. So, yeah, let's uh, play the call, which can sack probably the binding to get back Tanuki before binding goes away. And then next round we can hard cast Dreadhound, or maybe go Teachings plus Binding number two. And any one of those will get back the Binding from the graveyard. So we've got ample answers to Bard class. Colvori. That's fine. 6-6, six, six, but not for long. Opponent is playing Snow Mana, so possible they have like a Blizzard Brawl in there somewhere. 
Or maybe a frostbite could kill the companion here. They could attack with Targnar or Burgi to try and take out Tanuki after damage. Right, there is green mana, so let's see if there's another follow-up. Right, they're gonna attack and probably want to take out Burgi. And then Binding can take out Kolvori. Right, opponent did have the Frostbite as we suspected. Tanuki gets exiled. And the next step could just kill both with double binding. Let's see what we mill with teachings first, maybe. Or I can just go for Dreadhounds and then get back binding by second companion to kill Kolvori. And that way we have a Dreadhound in play once we play teachings to potentially deal more damage. Ooh, another Spirit Sister's Call. That is tempting. I think I should still kill Kolvori here. Second companion. And yeah, her opponent has seen enough, too much value for the Bard class deck to keep up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's okay. Got an early visionary to help fill the graveyard, maybe eventually channel back. And uh, Rutstein times two, so don't mind if one gets answered up against blue-white. Jeskai control, maybe the Kirin deck. So turn to Visionary, especially now that we have a backup. Don't mind if it gets answered. Could see a Fading Hope. Next turn, Rutstein. And then turn four, we can double spell. And then hopefully find a Binding soon to answer the Kirin if that shows up. Opponent foretells. Okay, I guess we're attacking, since I still probably want to play Rutstein here. Although it's close, especially if there's like a Doomscar in exile. Just picking up the Visionary would be better. Might be a Demon Bolt, which could kill Rutstein too here. Uh, made an insect, at least. Yeah, there's a Doomscar, sadly. Well, hopefully there's not a second one. Because I think the plan is still Visionary plus... Uh, teachings, although... Could also go for Rutstein, see what we generate here. And then if we make a treasure, I could play Burning Rune Demon next turn. Which gets the ball rolling as well. And then I can keep Visionary to channel as opposed to exposing it to more removal. Yeah, maybe that's even better. I made a blood token, which I can still sacrifice, maybe discard teachings to try and hit uh, something more useful. It's gonna be a Goldspan Dragon, which we can hopefully block soon with our Burning Rune Demon. Rutstein makes a treasure, so I get to play my demon. And hope there's no disruption. That resolves. And then demon goes for... Call plus binding, I think. Probably get the binding. Although it's possible they give us calls since we don't have a ton of stuff in play to sacrifice to it. 
All right, and that's what they do. So we'll see how that works out for them. I did discard my uh, teachings, which is one of the better enablers early on. Potent could cast a magma opus, tap some of our lands down in our upkeep, prevent us from casting the Spirit Sister's Call. But happy to block here, even if the demon gets finished off. And a farewell exiles my creatures, all right? So there's no getting them back with Spirit Sister's Call. So probably no point in playing it now then. Play Companion, see what we pick up. Another call. And then... Yeah, I guess even all graveyards could exile too here, so... Yeah, farewell. Pretty brutal. But I guess we'll have to rebuild. There's Hinata now. So Magma Opus can take out my Visionary and my Companion, which will leave me unable to sacrifice anything to the Spirit Sister's Call. So that's going to be a pretty big setback. So we're definitely behind. That Farewell, not a card you see in every Jeskai deck, but especially effective against our Graveyard strategy that relies on enchantments, as you can imagine. All right, Dreadhound was a nice draw. Fateful Absence skills Dreadhound. Makes a clue token, and we're taking eight. So we're gonna need some help off the top. Teachings. Alright. I guess uh, teachings and then Spirit Sisters Call. Hope there's no counter spells. And then hope we mill something useful. Although, let's see here. Yeah, Hinata doesn't count abilities, luckily, so binding, if we mill it over, is not gonna cost one more at least. I probably should start with teachings in case that gets countered. We'll have to reassess. Maybe sack the clue token instead. That resolves. Alright, did not mill over what I wanted. Let's see if the call resolves. It does. And then... Probably not the time to get back a second call. Instead, can go for Dreadhound, sacking the 1-1. One, one. And that can at least block the 4-4 four, four on the ground for the time being. But we're dead to any removal spell on Dreadhound. And with three cards in hand, I imagine our opponent's got something here. March exiles my call. Kind of a strange timing on that one. And a fateful absence deals with a Dreadhound, fair enough. Alright, so farewell. Definitely a good card against our strategy. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and hand seems keepable, although it is actually... A little awkward with all my lands coming to play tapped early, but I'll try it. Also, both my forests for binding, at least my dual lands are in hand. So only have the two basics left. Alright, one basic left. Still worth the two teachings here, I think.
turn two pack leader, always scary. And there's a call, perfect. So now I'm more into maybe channeling the Tanuki, which at the very least lets me play Binding next turn. And best case scenario, we can play the call with already a Dreadhound in the graveyard to potentially get back. Pack later hits us for three. And Ascendant Pack Leader, they must have drawn. And that's it. So, can get a Planes here. Alright, so no Spirit Sisters call just yet. So we can kill the Werewolf Pack Leader, or at least try to, unless there's Snakeskin Veil in hand. Eh, it's probably still better to preserve my life total. Could see a Chariot, it's gonna be an Oddity, Pumping Pack Leader. And probably fine to trade here. And then next turn, get back Dreadhound, sacking my Kirin after maybe exiling something. Last Forest. So, could also make a token, I guess, that's probably better. So I get to attack, make a token. Which we can then sacrifice to the call. To get back Dreadhound. Alright, not bad. And then Binding we can eventually get back as well. Another Dreadhound in hand, so ready to be hard cast. And yeah, between Rudstein and my teachings, we have a few ways of making 1 1 tokens as sacrifice fodder for our Spirit Sisters call. So that can also be very helpful. Teachings was one of those cards that was difficult to find a great home for it, but I think this one hits the spot. Oddity. Kills my 1-1, one, one, and we might see a second Blizzard Brawl kill Dreadhound. Yep. Fair enough. We'll take 6. And then now... Double Rudstein's not too exciting. Thing just uh, hard cast Dreadhound, and then I don't really want to sacrifice it as a problem. So maybe we'll kick things off with Rudstein, which, if it makes a blood token, can help me discard as well. Makes a treasure. That one's not too helpful. So, I can sacrifice it to get back a Tanuki. It's probably the play here. Could play second Rudstein, just in hopes of milling something better. Um, to maybe make an insect token to then get back Tanuki and keep a 1 4. Might be worth a shot. Mill the Binding and we get a Blood Token, so now I could also discard Dreadhound to the Blood Token to get that back instead. Always have the option of sacking the Call itself to get back Binding, but that's kind of a last resort. I think we're better off just passing, and then I might want to keep Land in hand to maybe discard to the Blood Token, and then we'll get back Tanuki, sacking Rudstein to present a bigger blocker. And then next turn we'll just hardcast a Dreadhound. 
Ooh, Inscription of Abundance. It's gonna fight Rudstein. So that leaves me unable to get back Tanuki. Unless I want to sack the Spirit Sister's Call, which is still an option. And I guess at this point it's probably a forced play, since otherwise uh, we're just dead to the lair. Well, glad this is an enchantment creature. A third Blizzard Brawl would be painful. Right, it's gonna be a Chariot, still very good. And Odyssey stays back. Might as well take my draw step, teachings the draw. So I can just play Dreadhound and pass, or I can play Dreadhound and teachings. That's also reasonable. So Dreadhound first, so that the teachings deals some additional damage. But yeah, we're desperately hoping to top deck another Spirit Sisters call. A demon would be great, because demon could find visionary and Spirit Sisters call, so we can channel one back. So we'll pass. Seven mana to transform Oddity, which is quite scary. But at least for now we've got some big blockers to protect our life total. Oddity number two. Tanuki, I'll happily hard cast. And then this eventually pumps the team by one which makes me want to pump the Tanuki, so it can still block profitably. And then at some point we'll uh, sack the blood token if we draw land. A Lotus Cobra. That's fine, better than a land would have been for us. And a binding, all right. Binding is good. Can deal with one oddity at least. Still probably not in a position to attack. If I were to attack with everyone, Chum Dreadhound. I mean, I guess we're close to potentially being able to, but problem is a land transforms Oddity, which would be a trample by itself. So that's just very likely to kill me. And uh, it's not too hard for the opponent to survive here. They can chump and then just chump a Tanuki. Do I attack with one creature? Then they just double block. And it's not a great trade for me, necessarily. And I could just take it, and then I might still be dead on the way back if they draw land. Yeah, it's a delicate situation. There's also a lair we need to keep in mind. Can be a 4-4 at the very least. I think we pass. But badly need to find some of our curve toppers. Pack leader, that's okay. Once we give our team Death Touch with Binding, Death Touch plus Trample on Tanuki could make the difference. Companion's not bad, it's a redraw. Don't have any forests left, sadly. And now we'll use the token. Alright, Visionary, so probably want to channel that to get back Spirit Sister's Call. And then next turn we can cast it, so just need to survive this next turn, hope they don't draw land to transform Oddity. Should be able to beat most other circumstances. Another Oddity is fine. And yeah, now the Death Touch Trample from Tanuki is going to come into effect. Opponent does not have a good attack. Ch 
channel for one. Get back. Spirit Sisters call, unless binding guarantees lethal here. Think long term, we're still gonna want to call. Just in case we don't decide to end the game next turn. So creatures gain death touch. I can send the two Tanukis, which is 13 trample death touch. Also have to keep the Dreadhound triggers in mind. Might be able to attack with everyone. As I can get back another Dreadhound from the graveyard as well. And there's a Dreadhound in play, which will also trigger. And then I can make a 1-1 just in case. Although putting an extra counter on my trampling Tanuki also would have been fine. So we'll see if they can survive. If not, Spirit Sister's Call still gives us a good uh, play second main. So yeah, with our Tanuki, we only need to assign one damage to the chariots and six can trample over. So that's still seven damage total if we include the Dreadhound trigger that will result from chariot dying. So no easy way for our opponent to block. All right, so one rest tramples over. And our opponent's just dead. All right, so didn't even need our Spirit Sisters call in this one. Only had it briefly just to get back a Tanuki. But yeah, still a close game. If we didn't have a Tanuki that's both a creature and an enchantment with call to still get it back after they killed my 1-1 at instant speed, we would have been dead to Hydra plus Oddity attack. So some very close games with our Amazon Sisters Call deck, and overall it's been a blast to play, lots of sweet graveyard recursion, and once you get those engines going, the deck feels unstoppable, so pretty happy with how the deck turned out, so definitely give it a try if it seems appealing to you. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.